from the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Preschool is much more than a daycare, yet the state is receiving a low ranking in attendance. Why officials say enrolling your child is so important. And the opioid crisis continues to escalate in the Valley. How Governor Doug Ducey is taking immediate action. Plus, Sheriff Paul Pinzone has been the county sheriff for months now, but some say he hasn't done enough. Why the Latino community is making their voices heard. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Emily Bloom. And I'm Patricio Espinosa. Thank you for joining us. A new report is shining light on the condition of kids in Arizona. Unfortunately, the news isn't good. Cronkite News reporter Tyler Finger has spent the day looking over this report. He joins us now in the broadcast center with that story. Tyler, how did Arizona do this year? Arizona once again ranked near the bottom, actually dropping a spot since last year. The Annie Casey Foundation's 2017 Kid Count Report ranks Arizona 46, meaning only four states are worse than Arizona. One of the indicators the report looked at was preschool attendance, a time educators believe is vital to a child's success. At a preschool on Arizona State University's Tempe campus, kids start learning early. Preschools are very much uh, important, um, but the type of curriculum that's emphasized in these preschools will matter. For Ann Kupfer, director of the Child Study Lab at ASU, preschools can't just simply be glorified daycares. It needs to provide an atmosphere that allows them to learn things like self-control. What they emphasize is very important, so it's not just pure academics, okay? What the real predictor of success later on is something called self-regulation skills. In the latest Kids Count report, 60% of children aged 3 to 4 are not enrolled in school. That number dropped 3% in five years, but the state still ranks in the bottom five. For Dana Wolf Namark at the Children's Action Alliance, the report as a whole is concerning. Who wants to be in the bottom five of anything, but especially something that literally shapes our future? We should be doing much better for kids. But back in Tempe at the Child Study Lab, Kupfer is worried about the number of parents not enrolling their kids in preschool. I am concerned because I think the less and the more uh, secular you are and secluded from this diversity that um, children are going to be at a disadvantage. Arizona sits 10% below the national average for young kids not in school. Some bright spots in the report. The rate of child and teen deaths dropped nearly 15% from 2010 to 2015, putting it below the national average. Also, the percentage of kids living in families where no parent has a full-time job improved more than the national trend. In the Broadcast Center, Tyler Finger, Cronkite News. The report ranks Arizona 40th for kids' health, and while this is low on the list, it's actually an improvement. In 2010, 13% of kids did not have health insurance, but in 2015, that number went down to 8% without coverage. This improvement is due in part to Medicaid expansion under Obamacare and a new kid care insurance program, which some worry is at risk under the Trump administration. Thousands and tens of thousands of children will lose their health care coverage through Medicaid and through kids care. And so all of this progress is at risk, not only across the country, but right here around us, our neighbors, our friends, our peers in Arizona. The report also shows improvement in teens who abuse drugs and alcohol and the teen birth rate. And there are only two insurance companies offering individual health plans on federal exchanges in Arizona, and they had filed paperwork to continue selling coverage in 2018. Blue Cross Blue Shield Arizona and Sentinel by HealthNet filed with the State Department of Insurance. Blue Cross Blue Shield sells in 13 rural counties, while HealthNet Insurance will sell plans in Pima and Maricopa County. A new executive order today from Governor Doug Ducey. Today's order requires the reporting of opioid overdoses, making sure state health officials have information within 24 hours. 
So um, this is gonna help us identify what communities are at risk, what demographic groups are at risk, what are we seeing right now? We have an indication that there may be a lot of um, poly substance use or other drugs, but we don't have a great picture on that. So it's gonna provide us with more uh, more detail on how to combat the ep opioid epidemic. Doctors, first responders, and pharmacists are among those required to provide reports. In addition, the Department of Health will begin testing blood samples from suspected opioid deaths. The new reporting requirement goes into effect 48 hours after it was issued. Cronkite News is dedicated to covering the opioid crisis in Arizona and nationwide. Our documentary, Hooked RX, From Prescription to Addiction, highlights the problem of painkillers here in our state. You can watch the documentary and find resources for getting help online at hookedrx.com. Concerns tonight from the court-appointed committee providing feedback to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Last night, the first of several community meetings took place, and while Sheriff Penzone recently closed in city, organizers are calling for more. Emotions running high at last night's community advisory board meeting, and with that, calls for newly elected Sheriff Pinzon to listen to the Latino community and build what many here refer to as trust between the two. I think the first step would be for him to have a forum, an open forum, where he would allow the community to to give their voices and to and to talk, you know, and him actually stay through the meeting. Isabel Chires is one of those people who would like to be heard. She spent three months in Jor Pius Ten City. It was too painful, she said, for her to even share her story on camera. And it is this type of fear and experiences members of the CAP want Sheriff Penzone to take into consideration. James Collins, director of community outreach, was at the meeting on behalf of Sheriff Penzone. I heard that. I heard that, and uh, and I also heard a number of things about fear and and trust too. So the sheriff has put together four advisory committees, and he's trying to reach out to uh, all entities. But the committees Director Collins talks about are not inclusive, says Dr. Maldonado. She's one of three appointed to the Community Advisory Board by the ACLU after a court order in 2013 resulting from racial profiling by deputies. The board, according to the ACLU, is to, quote, work with the community and court appointed monitor to gather concerns and provide feedback about MCSO policies and practices using meetings like this one. Last month, in what was seen by many here as a first good step, the new sheriff closed 10 City. And that's a good step. But again, the policies that are still creating fear in our communities are still there. Him working, he, he's choosing to allow, for example, immigration in his jails. The sheriff has, has spoken on that matter extensively. ICE is in the, in the jail, but they're on the tail ends. They have a, a an area that they basically they contact everyone, they look at everyone, and then they uh, deal with these individuals before they're released from the jail. Many spoke at the meeting and seem encouraged by an opportunity for both parties to openly talk. Director Collins promised he will share their concerns with Sheriff Penzone, but for now, both parties seem to agree in one thing, that there still is a long ways to go. And Sheriff Penzone's office sends us this statement, which reads in part, Sheriff Penzone asked if he could attend the previous CAB meeting, and his request was declined by the CAB. MCSO was not formally invited to the CAB meeting last night. However, MCSO representatives attended anyway, and as always, listened and responded to concerns or comments expressed by the participants. As evidenced by its statement and its actions since assuming office on January 1st, 2017, MCSO is committed to full compliance with all court orders. MCSO is actively meeting and working with leaders and residents of the affected communities to improve our relationship. Governor Doug Ducey has appointed a new judge for the Pima County Superior Court. With Judge Casey Stanford recently retiring, Ducey appoints Chief Criminal Deputy County Attorney Kelly Johnson. Johnson has been a prosecutor for more than 20 years, handling a wide range of criminal cases. 
And lawyers for a group of condemned prisoners are telling a federal judge they have reached a settlement with, the, with Arizona. The prisoners recently sued the state over how they conduct executions. The agreement includes limitations to the power of the Department of Corrections. That means they cannot change execution drugs last minute. Drugs must be tested beforehand and they cannot use expired drugs. This would allow transparency in the execution process. New technology to alert law enforcement to wrong way driver, drivers could soon be up on valley freeways. The system uses thermal cameras to detect when drivers enter the freeway going the wrong way. It triggers warning signs for the, for the drivers as well as advises others about the danger. It will also automatically focus freeway cameras on the wrong way vehicle and send automated alerts to highway patrol. The cost of the project is $3.7 million. Construction is expected to start this fall on I-17 from the I-10 to the Loop 101. But ADOT is hoping to begin construction even sooner. Fiesta World Charities partnered with a local organization to provide young single moms and their families a well-deserved break. Cronkite News reporter Anika Walters was in Scottsdale with moms and kids enjoying this staycation. Helping hands for single moms began in 2002 after founder Chris Kaufman ran into a little boy lost on the street and returned him to his mother. I started thinking what can we do to help single moms? Fifteen years later, that one little boy turned into 24 families. Kaufman's organization, Helping Hands for Single Moms, supports mothers obtaining a college degree and financial independence. Our goal is to come alongside a family while the mom goes to college, a single mom. And uh, so we try to provide supportive services uh, that will help build resilient families and then also help the mom succeed in college. The organization receives the support of Fiesta Bowl Charities to give the families a weekend away to celebrate mom's accomplishments. Volunteer Kelly Schindler says the most rewarding part is the smile she sees. My favorite part of today is being able to see the look on the mom's faces of pure pride. They're so excited of what the future has in store for them and we couldn't be more proud. Now of course a relaxing staycation at the Embassy Suites in Scottsdale is something to celebrate but for mothers here this weekend is about so much more. Being able to share um, the success of my graduation with my kids. Um, they, I worked hard, but they also worked hard on the other end, just waiting for me to come home. In 2015, more than one-third of Arizona households were run by single parents, according to ArizonaHealthMatters.org. In Scottsdale, Annika Walters, Cronkite News. And Helping Hand for Single Moms and Fiesta Bowl Charities recognize 11 mothers for, their fin for finishing their college degrees this year. Father's Day is this weekend, but some fathers won't get the chance to spend that day with their kids. Coming up on Cronkite News, what's getting in the way of these families and their Father's Day celebration? Well, Jeff Sessions testified earlier today before the Senate Intelligence Committee what he had to say. Coming up next. Oh, oh, think I finally found my With arrests by Immigration and Customs Enforcement up sharply this year, immigration advocates are renewing their plea not to divide families through deportation, especially as Father's Day nears. That was the message delivered today on Capitol Hill. Cronkite News reporter Noelle Lilly in our Washington Bureau has more on this story. Fathers often play an important role in the lives of their children, but advocates say for the children of immigrants, that role is being taken away. 
13-year-old Joel Massey only had one request for President Trump today in Washington. He says he just wants his dad back. He said that he can't live the dream of a life in America with his family to stand beside him. He said that he has to live in fear of persecution. Yeah. Massey's father, Areno Massey, was deported last month after living in the U.S. for 16 years. That's why today the immigration reform group America's Voice teamed up with New Jersey Representative Frank Pallone to speak at the Capitol about the families left behind when a father is deported. The group says this issue affects families nationwide, especially in states like Arizona. Well, Arizona is often called ground zero in the immigration debate. So Arizona is uh, disproportionately affected because it has a large immigrant population that's now being uh, directly impacted by these cruel policies. According to the Urban Institute and Migration Policy Institute, when a father is deported, the family's income is likely to drop an average of 73%. The group called on President Trump and the Department of Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly to stop separating families. We approached Father's Day. We wanted to take note of the fact that this administration is targeting low priority people, dads, who are providing for their family, who have never committed a crime. The group said that they hope to eventually be able to create an easier path to legal citizenship. I-246 The advocate's plea could be a tough sell in Washington. Elsewhere on the Capitol today, the acting director of ICE said that although the ICE targets illegal immigrants, any kind of illegal immigrants are subject to arrest as well. Live in Washington, Noelle Lilly, Cronkite News. Thank you, Noel. Sessions testified today before the Senate Intelligence Committee. The Republican senator is facing questioning over President Trump's firing of FBI Chief James Comey and his own alleged links to Russian officials. Sessions answered numerous questions, including the changes that need to be made. Strongly believe we needed to restore discipline within our department to adhere to just those kind of rules, but plus leaking rules and some of the other things that I think are a bit lax and need to be uh, uh, restored. During the hearing sessions, denies having undisclosed meetings with Russian officials at Washington at a Washington, D.C. hotel. Several Democratic senators expressed frustrations because Sessions repeatedly refused to answer questions regarding his conversations with the president. Today marks the second day of Monsoon Awareness Week, and officials want to make sure that you're informed. Coming up on Cronkite News, the do's and don'ts during monsoon season and how to stay safe. We had beautiful weather today, but we've got quite a bit in store for the week ahead. Your full seven-day forecast coming up. Heaven knows you're a dreamer. Don't hide it from anyone. Don't hide it from anyone. The National Weather Service has issued a red flag warning in northern and eastern Arizona due to multiple wildfires. In Flagstaff, winds are expected to send smoke from a nearby burning fire toward the city. The US-80 is now closed due to reduced visibility, and residential evacuations have been ordered in Cochise County. A fire in Dragoon has burned 23.6 square miles, but fire managers say they have contained 40% of that fire as of today. 
Authorities say residents in the Cochise Stronghold areas are still under evacuation, especially for people near the Lizard Wildfire that has already burned 15,000 acres. We were pretty relieved. We came back and then during the day, it was the mountain behind me here was, was clear and then it started flaring up during the day. Residents are advised to stay alert for any weather conditions that might make the fire change unexpectedly. And as Monsoon Awareness Week and the Arizona Department of Transportation is telling drivers to pull aside and stay alive when encountering dust storms. Cronkite News reporter Holly Bernstein has more safety tips you should follow. Holly? The heat is not the only weather Arizonans need to be aware of this summer. Driving during a dust storm can be dangerous. Here are some tips on how to stay safe. June 15th is the official start of the monsoon season. And while we aren't expecting storms this week, the Arizona Department of Transportation is reminding drivers how to stay safe when dust storms do arrive. ADOT's top tip is to not drive in a dust storm. Dust storms can result in little to no visibility on roads. If you encounter a dust storm, immediately check the traffic around your vehicle, front, back, and side, and begin slowing down. ADOT says don't wait until poor visibility makes it difficult to safely pull off the roadway. Instead, you should do this as soon as possible and completely exit the highway if you can. Always look for a safe place to pull completely off the paved portion of the road and turn off all vehicle lights, including your emergency flashers. Doing this will help prevent other vehicles approaching from behind to use your lights as a guide and possibly crashing into your parked vehicle. So your emergency brake, take your foot off the brake and stay in your car with your seatbelt on and wait for the storm to pass. ADOS says drivers of high profile vehicles should be especially aware of changing weather conditions and slow down. ADOS says it's starting construction soon on a new dust detection zone on I-10 between Eloy and Picacho. Signs will warn drivers of dangerous conditions. Holly Bernstein, Cronkite News. And residents in the valley have recently experienced a slight cool down. In fact, this morning, slow was 69 degrees. And according to the National Weather Service, the last time it was this cold on this date was in 1998. Our weather reporter Emily Bloom tells us if these temperatures will stick around. Emily? It has been beautiful today, but I'm afraid it's not going to be that way for too much longer. 97 right now, sunny and calm winds. Our high today of 97, where we're at right now, is still below our average of 104. So of course, at this time of year, we'll take it. Across the valley, we have got 87 in Superior, 91 in Cave Creek, 94 in Scottsdale, and ditto in Chandler. Across the state, it's the same thing. Still a little bit cool. We've got 73 at the Grand Canyon, 79 in Prescott, 75 in Sholo. Now, a Pacific weather system is what has been keeping us cool these past couple of days. However, that's going to move out overnight, so we've got a lot ahead. Tomorrow, we are going to be back up into the triple digits, and we are also going to be under a high pollution advisory. Thursday, we've got the first official day of the monsoon season. By Friday, we will be under another excessive heat, excessive heat advisory lasting through Monday. So your Father's Day weekend, we are also looking at potentially record-breaking highs. For Cronkite Weather, I'm Emily Bloom. A group of hikers got lost overnight in the Four Peaks, but luckily the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office Search and Rescue Unit rescued the five hikers. Sheriff Sergeant Joaquin Enriquez says the group ran out of food and water and ended up staying there until 6 a.m. the next day. This may also be a good time to remind hikers out there to always have enough water and snacks before they hike in this weather, as well as keeping track of where you are. A magician in D.C. has been sharing his work across the nation, including Arizona. Coming up on Cronkite News, how this artist shares his unique musical talent and what music means for him. <laughs> what are you doing? Possibilities. Yeah. Your day is filled with them. Reach up, energy in the fingertips, collapse. TV played out in that. And PBS helps everyone discover theirs. Anytime, anywhere. Up in the sky, you can see it. PBS, we're with you for life. When you take a walk down the street in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia, you'll see a lot of old brick buildings filled with history. But chances are you will also hear something you never heard before, as Tyler Finger found out. Arizona and Alexandria, while thousands of miles apart, 
have at least one musical connection. On this quiet street just outside of our nation's capital, there's a traditionally trained musician making music with a not-so-traditional instrument. This is Jamie Turner's stage for the day, where he takes two seemingly unmusical items, glass goblets and water, and manages to make music. There's something about the sound of glass that eclipses any sound I've ever worked with. For nearly the last four decades, Jamie has been lighting up crowds. He's played almost everywhere, from the street corner outside Washington, D.C., to one of his favorites, thousands of miles away. They scheduled me to perform in Native American schools all over Arizona for the whole week. It was one of the most profound experiences I've ever had in my life. The trip was a chance to share his musical world with others. They never heard anything like it. And they, they knew Western culture pretty well, but this was totally beyond anything they'd ever experienced. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why they were so delighted. In Alexandria, his fans can't get enough. I'm still amazed at how he can get out all those great songs with just a, a few, few pieces of glass and some water. I know what it's like as a musician performing for audiences. I've never had an instrument where I just set up and immediately I have a crowd. Bridging a divide between language and music. I'm just so grateful to be able to play an instrument where I'm able to relate to just about any culture anywhere. In Alexandria, Virginia, Tyler Finger, Cronkite News. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. And remember that for top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Thank you.